Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Airline Sim with me, Alpha Pi Omega and PNLL, our Polish airline that we restarted last week due to reasons that I stated in the past episode. Now I have pretty much only good news this week, um, but let's take it uh, from the facts and figures. <laughs> If you open up uh, the old episode, or, you know, if you remember how we were, you will kind of understand how much better we are doing with PNLL. Now, granted, we started flying uh, yesterday or the day before, I'm not sure, I think yesterday, uh, and we only flew 29 flights from uh, that moment, but you can already see some numbers here. The seed oil factor is 82.27%, which is, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around 20 to 15% higher than with the last airline. While revenue per passenger is pretty much the same, and revenue per flight, which is fun, is pretty much the same as well. So while flying a uh, much smaller aircraft, we are making about the same amount of money per passenger and per flight. So that makes me really happy. Revenue per passenger transport and stuff like that, you don't really need to look into that now because, uh, you know, it's Sunday, the week is going to be closing. So next week is going to be our first model week. But when we look at the stations, uh, you can see that the loads are way better. We have great numbers in Petersburg, Prague, Moscow, Vnukovo, Minsk National, Kaliningrad, Burgas, Belgrade. Uh, we have almost perfect numbers in Catania. Uh, Warsaw has 78%. London, Luton has 62%. And Bergen has 42%. So we are currently uh, flying six aircraft. Uh, we are flying five of the Canada, Re Canada Regional Jets 200s. Pardon me, I'm, you know, finding it hard to talk, <laughs> which is great for what's playing. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, we have five of these, and yesterday I found one uh, Canada Regional Jet 900, which was for a reasonable price, so I snagged it up. It's a bit younger than the other aircraft, but it's okay. Uh, I have to admit that uh, I was a bit skeptical about all these aircraft, because they're quite aged, and I, as, as I mentioned, um, you know, having having older aircraft in Europe is not a good idea uh, if you have direct competition, which we do. Uh, but as it turns out, it's not such a big problem because we're not competing on any uh, major routes and we are capable of fighting through price and service. Now, I think I haven't showed that uh, last time, but we are using uh, Leisure Plus in economy and the recliner long haul in business class, which is a bit of an overkill, I think, for Europe. Uh, but for us, it's working like a charm. Look at the ratings. For business class, all the way up to 2.5 thousand, it's, it's maximum. And for economy, it's pretty good. Plus, I have w went way overboard with the flight attendants. And we have crazy seat page for business class as well. So business is, is golden. And the economy is uh, doing fine. While with uh, the 900, you can see that it's even better. We are, you know, pretty well. Like we have no fine that would be over 2.5 thousand. So pretty much everywhere in business, uh, people are screaming in joy. Service-wise, uh, we're also doing quite a good job, I think. We have two services, short haul and Europe. Uh, short haul, I believe, is uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. is it? Wait, wait, no, that's cabin. Oh my god, I'm wrong menu entirely. Ah, I misclicked. Okay, so yeah, we have only one service profile. I was kind of kind of surprised, but um, can't have the. Oh, we do have short haul and so oh yeah that's that's why okay um back 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 reverse we have two service profiles we have one for Kaliningrad and very short flights which is the short haul which you can see here uh but it's doing okay i think you know uh it's basically in this category most of the time uh anywhere higher than that we would be using europe so this is this is uh the short haul which you can see economy passengers are crazy about and business uh well 
they enjoy it. I could bump it up, but it seems like a huge investment because, you know, you would need to give them way more luxury than they, they deserve. And we can't really, you know, chip it up on um, the warm meals because we need at least 800 kilometers on that. So that's not possible. Uh, so I tested it a lot. We could go to somewhere around three bars, but the price would be almost double for the service. So I decided to be cheap and uh, work it like this. And it's working, you know, it's not a problem. For Europe, uh, we're going a bit more into that. And, you know, we have a lot to show for it. You can see that economy passengers are all screaming in joy and business class uh, passengers are not offended. So I'm happy with that, you know truth be told. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. Now let's look at uh, the, the airplanes themselves. Uh, most of them are flying right now. One is in Prague, uh, one is in Algier, and yeah, the 900 is flying from Bogota, really. Is that, I think that's Bogota. Yeah, it's from Bogota. <laughs> well, that's one little flight. So this is the new newest uh, addition to our fleet. Uh, I added a couple of uh, flights to it and I spoke before. We have flights to Gatwick here, we have flights uh, to Moscow Sharmetyevo and we have flights to uh, Stockholm uh, Arwanda. So all these we know from history that they worked. So let's hope they will work again. Uh, with the other aircraft uh, you can see how they're doing. This one is flying Catania, which is, you know, completely full, Minsk and Burgas. The other airplane is flying uh, Luton. Then St. Petersburg. For some reason, we have very bad numbers for St. Petersburg as a departure from Varsha, but back they're completely full. I checked, there's no difference in pricing or anything. So I just think, uh, because the, the major thing here is that we're getting quite a lot of feed. Yeah, to external and own connection. And I think this is not really working with uh, the departure to. Yeah, we just get 10. So we need to work on the connections to St. Petersburg. Uh, we're flying to Belgrade, which is working perfectly. Uh, Lutonia, you can see that it's getting better. Uh, so it's not something I would consider canceling. I think, though, uh, Luton, Luton. Yeah, we're still making money on this one. And we're making a bit of a loss on this one. But it's not, not something terrible. And they connect. And here we have also connections, right? Yeah, from own feeder. So that is perfect. So it's working, like it's not a problem. Uh, St. Petersburg, on the other hand, let's check it. This one that finished today. So the flight there ended up in quite a loss, $1,800 and some dollars. And the flight back ended up in a positive 1000 uh in profit. And to own a connection, 12 And from own feeder, 9 So So the line is not, um, it's barely breaking. Uh, even, you know, we're just, uh, we're losing at the added costs, overhead costs, which is like network planning and administration, uh, also ramp agents, chicken agents, stuff like that. Uh, but it's not a thing I would consider canceling just for that. Uh, Luton, we already saw, quite mm, to Luton, yeah, we checked that. Uh, this one, uh, AAC is doing great. It's flying to Kaliningrad. And then it's flying to Prague. Prague is a big hit. I'm really surprised. I think the first uh, flights that we had there were for quite a low price. Yeah, so they didn't really uh, make profit. But I increased the prices and hopefully we're going to be able to uh, get better numbers here. Coming in round again, uh, it's doing fine though. It has the same problem as we saw elsewhere. Not that much demand to fly there and a lot of demand to fly back. Uh, so 1600 in loss, and here we have 74 in loss. I increased the prices, don't worry. Uh, to external connection from home feeder. Well, this one is not doing all that well, but again, I increased the prices. We'll see. We'll tweak it out, see what it does. And, um, you know, in certain ways, even a flight that's losing you money, uh, or as, you know, it seems that it's losing you money, it's not losing you 
that much because all the costs that you have on your plane are in this case divided by three. Uh, we have to cover for the plane costs uh, for flights to uh, Prague, for flights to Bergen and flights to Kaliningrad. So this airplane has only three routes, that's six flights per day, and all of its costs are accounted for in these flight numbers. So if Kaliningrad is, you know, showing us that we're like losing money, you have to count it together because even if we lose like 1200 it is much better to lose that money than to have the plane stand on the runway and then not do anything because then the all the costs say 5000 would go and have to be accounted for by the other two flights so you know this is not such a biggie for me and if we get any connection for it it's fine we're gonna add uh, more flights and more more people to Kaliningrad and as we expand the route I believe that there will be more people trying to get to Kaliningrad so trust me uh, on that another airplane AAD uh, is flying to Moscow uh, Vnukovo uh, this one is doing very well. I had to fly to Vnukovo and then not uh, Sheremetyevo. Vnukovo is the smallest of the three airports or international airports in Moscow. And I believe we're doing, yeah, we're doing fairly fine. We're breaking almost even on this. And we're getting some connection on both routes. Yeah, and your external connection mostly, but uh, still, it's a good line, you know. Um, we're getting a decent number and again I had to fly to Vnukovo I couldn't um, shadow Dem Domodedovo or Shermetyevo because um, these small aircraft can't fly there from Warsaw so that's kind of a bummer but again now we have a bigger aircraft who is going to fly there we're flying to uh, Rome Campino again the same problem I wanted to fly to um, uh, Rome Oh, wait, Malpensa is in uh, in Milan. This is Rome. Uh, Fiumicino. Fiumicino, but again, it's too big of an uh, airport. So we're flying to Campino, and I think that one is doing us... Yeah, we're, we're making some small profit on these flights, so it's good. Uh, you know, I'm... I understand that it's not uh, a reasonable thing to look on at two flights and say, oh, well, we're making profit. But on the other hand, um, this is a reasonable source. You know, if we if, if it goes by some percent on other flights up and down, I'm willing to take it. If it, you know, you, you, can, you could see it, the other ones that we're, we're losing like 80 airlines and dollars. And I'm OK with it because we're making the money elsewhere. Plus, we get... Um, the connections from own feeders and that's really important you need to expand your uh, net you know here for example we're not getting anything but this part is oh it's not profitable but again you know we're covering for it uh, pretty well so I'm okay network revenues 5,000 and here we can see the cost yeah this is what would be um, what would have to be paid by other people or other flights if we weren't flying here. So Camp Campino is doing fine, I'm okay with it. Uh, the flights to Norway, oh, Trondheim, we can see it's not all that good. Uh, Trondheim and Stavanger. I scheduled this aircraft in a bit of a zigzag manner. We're flying Trondheim uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday and we're flying to Stavanger at uh, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, and Saturday. Um, but those flights aren't, you know, doing us all that good. So I'm not going to show more flights at this point. Well, they're, again, not a biggie. Uh, I think we might be even making a small profit. No, no, we're not. It's it's a bit of a loss. Uh, but, you know. From uh, either 8 to external connection. Uh, I'm okay with it. I don't mind them. Like, it's gonna get better, you know, and we're, you know, to be honest, we're slowly running out of places to fly to. So I'll try to tweak these and have a bit um, better margin on them by increasing the prices or seeing if we face a lot of competition, then dropping the prices uh, rather than canceling them all together. So that's the 200th. Um, this is our last 200th. Which is fine to Odessa, which was a new place for me. But you can see it's not doing all, all that bad. It has reasonable numbers, and yet it's gonna fly tomorrow, so we're gonna have another entire calculation, and I'm pretty sure that we're gonna end up in profit then. 
so that's perfect. It's fine to Belgrade. We shuttle actually two daily flights to Belgrade now. Um, it's, yeah, Belgrade, two, two daily flights now because we were running uh, on a high, uh, you know, profit there on a high um, amount of people. You can see that it's booked so well already. So I'm thinking of adding another uh, evening connection to it. Yeah, look at that. It's perfect. It's perfect. From own feeder, from external feeder. Most of these are not our <laughs> external connection, but we we do a good job at hauling them there and back. So I'm okay for with it. Belgrade can stay. I actually might shuttle one of them to the bigger airplane if we have that because yeah, look at that. Gat Gatwick is already. It's gonna fly in three days, and we already have some bookings there. Are there all sixteen from external connection? No, 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 no. So this is already uh, a demand calculated. So we can expect about 36 passengers to 40 in economy and about full business class. Well, that could work. That could work for me. Moscow, we don't know much. Uh, Stockholm, again, we'll have to see this. This is our big investment. We're paying the aircraft is only about twice the size, I think. Yeah, it's not even twice the size. It's slightly less than twice the size, but we're paying about six times more for it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, where is it? Cash flow here. So we're paying about 11,000 for this one, 11,000 for this one, and we're paying yeah, 69,000 for the bigger one. So we have to, well, it's not six times, but like five times more, uh, three times more than for this one. So we have to be really careful. Uh, to utilize it more. Well, as I said, if it doesn't work, I'm gonna shadow it, for example, to uh, some of the places where we know it's working, which could be uh, Belgrade, definitely Belgrade. Uh, we could add another, um, we could like, add a ton of places to it and switch our smaller aircraft to different places. St. Petersburg could definitely work, you know, Minsk. So we have a lot of uh, places where this aircraft could fly profitable. Uh, profitable if those places where I'm sending it uh, won't work. The thing is, I want to send it there because these are the bigger uh, airports, you know. These are the places where our s like small aircraft can't reach. So that's why I want to send it there and we'll see. Uh, but again, we're at the very beginning, so there's not much uh, things to say about it. And look at that, we're making... Uh, we're actually a pretty decent airline already. We have six aircraft and we still have about 80% uh, or four-fifths of our initial money there. I was actually thinking that we might buy these aircraft um, because they, they were like one million each. But I said like if we pay 11,000 for them, we could be running them for so long and not even uh, feel a damn thing. <laughs> so... Uh, if if this works, we're gonna solo expand with the smaller aircraft. Though I'm I'm running out of ideas where to send them because most of the places where I would are already uh, you know completely covered. So we would have to start targeting like really small places uh, that usually don't have that much demand. For example, in you know let's look at Warsaw and we'll see how we're doing here. When you look at flight shuttle. Uh, we already spoke about that uh, most of the airports in, uh, well, all of the airports in Poland are completely covered. But we can look, for example, Czech Republic. Uh, there's like two, maybe three airports where we could fly. And yeah, Brno and Ostrava are not, not really taken. There's no direct connection. So Brno could give us a bit of demand. Uh, Ostrava, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, they, they bumped up Karoy Vare and Pardubica, really. It's interesting. I, I remember they were one bar, all of them. So Brno might be a good good thing to shuttle a flight to. It's not that far, and there usually isn't that many people flying there. Let's check it out. Yeah, there's only a couple of people. So uh, we could, you know, potentially cover it for all the... Well, there's flights to Moscow. Uh, but there won't be that many other flights. There's a flight to Liège, direct one. Of course, there's got, most of the flights will be to Prague. There's a direct flight to Berlin, Cologne, Düsseldorf, Hanover, Munich. 
as the Nymark fights to actually how big is Budapest? Oh, we could potentially start fights to Budapest. That one could work well for us. So let's open it to uh, I'm gonna well, I think we could get a couple of you know fights in our daily. There's a fight to Kiev. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Kiev um, We might profile ourselves as good uh, connectors of these smaller aircraft to places like uh, Odessa. There's a number of other places where we could fly to Lvov or Lviv uh, being good. Dnipropetrovsk and Donetsk. Donetsk and Dnipropetrovsk. I think like people from London would be willing to uh, take these on. Uh, if this time you already Simferopol. Okay, yeah, Simferopol could be good. So this is a, this is a number of uh, places we could fly to. Uh, the bigger problem is the flights to the west. Oh yeah, one thing I haven't spoken about is Algier. I have been offered a connecting or interlining agreement from a guy in Algier, but look at that. Yeah, this one is gonna fly well. On the 6th, tomorrow, well, we have like six people flying on the line. And they're to your own connection. Uh, this is a, this is a horrible idea. We don't even pay for, well, we, we can't even pay for the fuel, to be honest. And I don't know, I don't think there's more demand or something like that. I don't think we have another competition. Over here. Yeah, we're, we're the one. We're the best guys for the job. We have the highest possible rating. So I don't think it's gonna work. Do we have a big partner in Algier? I was hoping that his. Um, Algier Air. I was hoping that his. You know. Uh, entire net would be enough for us. But we just don't. Don't get it. There's not. Enough demand. People just don't want to fly to Africa in, in Warsaw, as it seems. I mean, he's doing great, man. Algier is so easy and such a good place. I'm surprised he doesn't own the fucking things. I think how he's covering Africa, and it's pretty cool. The long haul, yeah. He has most of South Africa, America, Americas, and even Asia a bit. Does he have the Dreamliners? No, he's flying triple sevens and seven six sevens. Okay, well, so that that flight is probably gonna have to go. I might, you know, send him a message that um, I'm gonna cancel it. Also, we're wasting a lot of money on the interlining. I think with him, yeah, sixteen thousand. Well, yeah, it's it's a number like sixteen thousand Indians is not, for a company of our size. It's not not a small thing. How about you? Are, um, we're paying way more for that, again, with the Ukrainian airlines, but I think these are way be better for us, you know, they're fine. Like, Ukrainian airlines, you know, when you look at Warsaw, they have two, four, six, seven daily flights for they're feeding us people and feeding from us, so that that's a big thing. And don't get me started on Helvetia Air. And I started uh, interacting with someone called uh, Fly Estonia. I'm not sure if he's my uh, subscriber, but uh, he started flying in in Estonia and the Baltic Republic, so I wish him the best. He bought uh, five subs and he's trying to make it work. I remember that uh, the Baltic region was extremely hard, like it was super hard, and playing it on an established server like this, man, kudos to you, Warsaw is a cake compared to this, so I'm hoping he can make it work. I let him uh, have the flights to Warsaw completely, I'm not gonna interfere with his development, because uh, for me, uh, it's very important to have people around me that uh, will work with me, and you know, feed me, and I will feed them, so... He can keep those, man. I'm, I'm not touching fucking Baltic at all. That, that area is a hellhole. There is almost no demand for any fights. And these people, well, you know, he'll see. And I hope he will make it. I, I Fingers crossed he, he will need all his mastery to do it. But if he doesn't, man, that's an achievement. And I will continue uh, watching his development because uh, I, I can only imagine what it's like. Man, even the real-life airlines bankrupted there. 
like they they couldn't make it work so fucking hellhole uh, so again, as I said, there's not that many places to fly to. Uh, I mean, in, in Western Europe, we're pretty much covered. Like, uh, let's look at Germany. I don't have any flights to Germany, and I know there's usually a big demand for uh, for those flights. But uh, I'm going to do it like this and check if we can open the offices somewhere. So Berlin... It's completely out of question. <laughs> These airports I'm not gonna fly to. What about Bremen? Uh, Bremen is an option. Okay. Cologne, I know Dortmund. Okay, Dortmund is a good place too. Dresden. Well, Dresden is super close, I think, but you know, why the hell not? Yeah, and most of these are. are Fields don't have that many people flying to them, so let's snag them up. They are, they're fairly close. It seems like a waste flying there with a jet, to be honest. Dortmund, um, and there's one Han. Yeah, there's a flight to Han. Um, before a competition, though, where are they flying? Um, uh, next generation. Okay, we're not gonna. Compete with that. Uh, Frankfurt, Friedrichshafen, that's a fairly small aircraft. What about Hanover? I'm pretty sure that one's taken, yeah. Um, Leipzig, definitely that one is gonna be, yeah, that one's. Dude, that one is taking my uh, cargo flight. Leipzig is an inc incredibly big cargo destination. Yeah, most of these finds will probably be. Uh, let's open it. We'll see. And there's Niederheim. Well, that one's far, but okay. We'll have to test these out. You know, that there isn't anything in Nuremberg. And there's a fight in Nuremberg and in Stuttgart. So, Paderborn, Salzbrücken. Uh, no, we're done. I'd also like to start flying to Vienna, but the problem here is that Vienna is fairly big. It's a nine bar airport, and I don't think our aircraft can go there. These ones definitely not. From seven, you can only go to seven. So, what about. Well, there are no seven. Oh, there's a 700 now available. Oh, fuck you, man. That's aircraft trade and leasing organization. Yeah, like, this one would be more than we pay for two... Uh, well, actually, this is more than we pay for all of our 200s together. But I think the 700 would be the way to go. I think he will be... Yeah, he's able to fly there. But again, I, I can't, at this point, have such high costs. We already went over that in the video where I bankrupted, pretty much. On the overhead cost, I mean, it took me a couple of weeks to break even, and it was too late then. And you will have none, right? Yeah, those are expensive. So I might actually have to look into a different type of aircraft. Well, do we have a number of places now where we, uh, you know, where we can fly? And you look at that. Yeah, all these airports are for us to. Catch not Paris and not Vienna, but Sofia, uh, Simferopol, Niederheim. Yeah, that would be pretty much we would grow our uh, network this way a lot of here and a lot of here. So that might work. I don't know if we should fly to Balkans or somewhere. Catania is working well. I know we were flying to a different spot in Italy too. Uh, what was it? Are we burned? Hold on. I'm confused. There was another fight which was... Oh, we flew fine to Cagliari and then we switched to Catania. Yeah, Cagliari... I don't know. Could work. And... Oh, Milan. We could fly to Milan. We not that. Uh, isn't there a connection to 
Marshall Dow, Galleries. Yeah, they're fine with two, so Milan is out of the question. Oreo of Serie Naples. I know Naples is there. Palermo is not. Reggio Calabria, Pisa though. I think Pisa is not connected to us. Venice is, but Verona isn't, nor is Turin. So maybe I could try those. Turin and Pisa. Facciano. No Poland, only Portugal. Let's open them, open them. We'll see. You know, so I'm gonna continue with opening stations like that. We're gonna have to, uh, you know, see if it works. Many of them won't, so I have to be pretty much prepared for that. But again, uh, we'll already need a place to switch uh, Algier for. I'm pretty certain, and we're slowly running out of the cheap 200s. I might want to uh, get a couple of bigger ones, even though they might cost more. We're gonna transport more passengers and start switching. Uh, the most profitable routes to them one by one and seeing how they're gonna do because yeah there's only two five of these and they're starting to get more and more expensive though I am willing to pay that it's not all that crazy uh, also we could go with uh, the hundred ones which are awful uh, but they could work again and I'm pretty sure that these ones will be super cheap yeah, there we could we could find our business here. We could find our business here. Uh, the thing why I shouldn't buy these, another argument for why I shouldn't have bought the ones that I bought, is that only a number of those can be bought. All others are owned by Archie's Leasing, which is a huge leasing company. And I'm pretty sure they won't sell them to us. So eventually, uh, once our net grows enough, we will start switching to a bigger aircraft. I think we might go again with the Emperors. Uh, those weren't all that bad, and uh, if we build a bigger route and, you know, keep adding more air... Actually, you know what? That's fucking interesting. Why haven't I thought of that? Uh, the Emperor's the smallest one, was 80. Oh, yeah, but there are no, no aircraft available. What about the 175? So how expensive are they? They have 88 seats. Oh, starting price 176. That's still better than the hundred thousand that we would pay for the Canada. So we might start to, uh, you know, use the Canadars and use the M Embraers, these ones, and they could work pretty well for us. We could switch some routes to those and uh, expand. But that's, you know, the song of the future. Uh, when we have 10 to 12 aircrafts already running and going, we can start the upgrade process. So, yeah. Anyway, this has been going for quite some time now. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. And uh, I'm hoping that you will join me next time for some more update on PNLL. It's uh, looking pretty damn good, I would say. I think we're going to end up in, if not a profit, then a minor loss, and that will be enough for us.